Welcome to the LDN Radio Show, brought to you by the LDN Research Trust. I'm your host, Linda Elsigood. I have an exciting lineup of guest speakers who are LDN experts in their field. We will be discussing low dose naltrexone and its many uses in autoimmune diseases, cancers, etc. Thank you for joining us. Today I'd like to welcome back Dina from Canada, who told her story a few years ago now. Thank you for joining us today, Dina. It's my pleasure. Thanks, Linda, for inviting me. So can you just briefly tell people what conditions you took LDN for, how long ago it was when you started and how long you've been on it now? Okay, um, it was about 40 years ago that um, I started to have some issues. And when I was 28, my son was three, I woke up and I couldn't walk. And that was because my ankles had swollen up and were stiff. And I went to the doctor and she said after tests and examination and family history that I had rheumatoid arthritis. But that changed over the months that I continued to go to her, even though I, it took six weeks before I could walk properly, uh, because I had extreme sun reaction with rash and hives. I had um, migratory arthritis, all kinds of um, reactions to chemicals, paint, fumes, all this kind of thing. So I kept going back to her and so she ran some more tests and she told me it's lupus. And then she um, sent me to a specialist who confirmed it. At that point, I was asked, you know, not asked, I mean, the doctor started, the specialist started to write a prescription for two drugs. One was antimalarial and the other was a chemo drug. And I asked if that would keep me from ending up with kidney failure. And she said, uh, no, I can't guarantee that. So that was a wake up call because I'd been going to lupus support meetings and they had, these women had said they'd gone to bed all right, but woken up with kidney failure and been rushed to emergency. Um, so I decided not to take those drugs and to try and go at this with diet and the like and supplements didn't have a lot of success. <laughs> I had multiple symptoms and seemed to be going to doctors and specialists and went on for decades, but I had a bit of relief with anti-inflammatory diet with some supplements. And I was always open to finding out more. And that's what led me to LDN a couple of years ago. Um, I wish I had known about it a lot sooner because it was unbelievable what a difference it made for me. I was um, really reminded of it recently because it's been two years and I think you start to forget just how terrible things were, at least I did. Um, and, and I wrote down uh, my story to submit it to the LDN a book that's going to be released at some point. And I saw all these symptoms and all these conditions and all these doctors and how I had a drawer full of braces for thumbs, wrists, knees, back, ankles. I mean, I thought, oh my goodness, I've come a long way. And I needed that reminder. Um, but I do uh, have to tell one story that's amazing was I take subliminal, subliminal, sublingual LDN mm -hmm. um, and I was trying to get the most out of it and the last week I was really trying you know not realizing probably at the bottom of the bottle that's not a lot it's the almond oil or whatever they, they use to fill and uh, I had the worst week <laughs> I broke out in uh my infections that I get from, it's like herpes, shingles, uh, infections back to back. Um, 
I mentally started to notice a big dive with my mood. And I put it together pretty quickly, but not quick enough. I think, you know, it was like, oh, I've got to use the new bottle. I can't be trying to get every last drop out of this bottle. Um, that was my reminder that I lived not just with chronic pain, but with infections back to back and just so much um, mental depression that I'd forgotten about. So that was another wake up call. And I had this past year, quite a, in 2022, a very stressful year where I lost my brother, had to euthanize my cat, uh, my son's marriage ended. <laughs> we had business issues because of COVID. And I got a test again that, my goodness, this makes a difference because that would have put me into a flare where I'd be bedridden uh, in the past. Um, and that didn't happen, which was a way, you know, for me was quite a revelation. Um, it works in conjunction with my diet. I have experimented a lot and diet's really important. I do need my anti-inflammatory diet with, in my case, a low oxalate antihistamine type of food choices because I am very sensitive. I, I can't say that LDN has helped my sun allergy or my extreme bug uh, bite reactions, but in terms of the long, long list of symptoms from this lupus type of condition, which now has been, um, it's unident uh, uh, sorry, undifferentiated connective tissue disease is what my doctor who has lupus said because of no organ involvement that that is a better definition of what I'm experiencing. Still autoimmune and they're all very similar. Your body's inflamed and uh, you know, of course there's more extreme ones than others. I feel grateful that, that I have just this to deal with. Could you tell us, cause there might be some people out there with lupus who would be interested in knowing exactly what those symptoms are you've alluded to. All right. Um, like I say, the, the skin hives and rash were the immediate, um, that it, it, it morphed into more of just an insane itching without the rash and hives as time went on. Um, to this day, a minute of sun and I incredibly itchy and then my immune system is affected by that. Um, so I, I'm very careful about the sun. Um, the other things were chronic pain from muscle, joint, nerve, bone, uh, the gamut, and migratory pain, or it settling in some place like my back, where I spent two months on the floor on a little thin mattress, because I could not stand to be in a bed where it was moving from my husband, just moving in the bed, it was just excruciating pain. Um, and when it would leave one part of my body, then there would be another, you know, and I, often I tried to go to doctors, to a specialist, but it would be, it would be over and I'd be, uh, you know, on to the next. And one of the other really dramatic for me was um, what was determined to be vest vestibular migraine, which manifested in vertigo. I never had a headache, just extreme vertigo, like, as if you'd just gotten off a ride and out both ends, unfortunately, at the same time. And that would put me in bed for days, a week It's uh, at the early days. It got a little better as time went on, but I would still have episodes of this, which I don't know, which is that I'm extremely grateful for because that was debilitating. Uh, Paint fumes, like I mentioned earlier, I was bedridden for weeks, exposed to what I thought was going to be very toxic because it was supposed to be um, a paint that didn't do that. But it turned out, unfortunately, the hardware store made a mistake and oh. I got really sick. And I felt like a truck had hit my body, which is a common 
uh, were, you know, common saying amongst people who have lupus. Um, and really drug-like sleeps for hours. I couldn't get myself out of bed, even on good days. And if I had a good day, I would end up overdoing it because I was so behind and everything working, trying to work at home. I, I, for periods of time I could with my husband, with our business and then the housework and raising a son, it, the next day I'd be finished from trying to catch up on the one day. Um, other symptoms, I had GI neurological symptoms I don't know if there was one part of me, you know, panic attacks, uh, a short spell of dementia that was stress related. Stress is obviously a trigger with, you know, autoimmune disease. And I had had some stress with my mother who was going through a very difficult time in her old age. And uh, I literally woke up and didn't know where I was. I didn't know who the this person beside me, my husband of 35 years at the time, I just literally didn't know who I was and where I was. And this lasted, I don't know how long. I just know it happened for a few hours and it was terrifying. I got a little idea of what it must be like to, to be without your um, memory. Uh, another time I woke up and I was paralyzed. I it was all I could do was cry. My tears worked, but I couldn't move my body. And um, like I said, I go to doctors. I felt like a nutcase. And I'd explained to a doctor who did understand being the one who had lupus that I finally got. And she would say, that's neurological. This is this, this is that. And explain to me that she had gone from doctor to doctor and had similar, similar experiences that i had had where they said, you don't have lupus. It's not showing up in your blood. You know, <laughs> you <laughs> possibly need antidepressants. Uh, and she said she had the same thing till she lost a kidney. And that was when, you know, I realized that I wasn't alone, you know, in my frustration with doctors. She was a doctor experiencing this. Um, the reason she changed my diagnosis that had been made decades before to undifferentiated connective tissue diseases because there was no major organ involvement in all these decades where I lost a kidney or had some other flare that ended me up in emergency. Um, and I've read about it. It's under the umbrella of lupus. It's all connected. There's a whole bunch of autoimmune diseases that are all um, you know, with that particular one, you can get so many different symptoms. So it's just less dangerous um, one to have, which is a relief for sure. Um, yeah, I guess that's, there's a lot of symptoms, but I can't, I can't I, literally, you know, I mean, I can't think of a part of my body, trigger fingers from carpal tunnel surgery, the surgeons that he'd never seen pressure on a nerve that, um, you know, they, they rushed the surgery to, to, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't for days. I had tried everything that gave me Valium, anything because the pain was so in intense. So it just seemed like um, everything I got, I got, oh, and medications. I couldn't take medications without reactions. I'd have I can remember for sleep, one doctor gave me an antidepressant that is good for sleep. And he heard my complaint of my body just riddled with arthritis happened very quickly. He said, that only happens in like a one to 5% of the population. It's extremely rare. Well, that's me. <laughs> that's rare. I'm going to get it. Um, I'm afraid to take aspirin. I haven't for decades. I just... I just don't take anything. And LDN, for me, I thought, what did I have to lose when I read about it, went on your website and watch videos and read stories. And I just thought, what have I got to lose? It probably won't work was my 
back of my mind because a lot of supplements that people swore by would only work for a little bit and then I'd have a reaction to it. So I was expecting the worst. Um, and it's been, it's not a miracle drug. I know this because it's not a hundred percent. And if I'm really stressed and don't watch my diet, then I'm going to have some problems that have gone away with LDN, but it's like a miracle for me <laughs> because my life has been transformed and I'm very grateful. Were you sensitive to LDN initially? Yes. I, that was why I had to take the sublingual. Uh, I tried the pill form and I had incredible GI, um, not a minor thing. This was, it was as if my um, gallbladder was, was excruciating. I just couldn't believe it. And um, I asked the pharmacist and so that's extremely rare, but <laughs> well, let's try you on the sublingual. And that I had no problem with that it's wonderful i do take uh, more than the average dose of 4.55 i do take 10 milligrams uh, am pm because i found when i experimented that my um, chronic infections the herpes simplex uh, 2 would recur and when i took it morning and evening five at each i had no outbreaks unless I was extremely stressed and lost sleep, but because the LDN has made sleep such a wonderful thing compared to the past where I had insomnia, um, I, I really have very rare uh, incidents of, of that anymore or, or a shingles outbreak, which I, I am also prone to. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I think pain is still, it's, you know, it's not a hundred percent. I still have some breakthrough pain at night, uh, but not, not that often. And it's usually related to diet. And that I say, because I experiment a lot, trying to open up what I can eat because over the two years, I've been able to eat more variety of foods without reacting and take supplements that I wasn't able to take before as well. So something like uh, quercetin, I find to be very valuable because it's an anti-histamine. Uh, anti and um, another uh, one that's good for inflammation is uh, grapeseed extract and pine bark extract. The, so these things, like I say, I, I can take them once in a while to, if if I'm off course, you know, if something's occurred or stress is built up and um, I just, uh, I, I hope for more improvements. It's only been two years. So I, I don't, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a lot, you know, there's hope for even more. Mm -hmm. When you were talking about vertigo, I used to have really bad vertigo and I could even get it lying down in bed. The bed oh, yeah. would, would spin and spin. Oh, yeah. And I would have to hold on to the mattress because I thought I was going to be thrown <laughs> out of bed. But it, it's, it's a horrible feeling, isn't it? It's oh. awful. And and it for me, I would suddenly get really hot on top of this. <laughs> and then I was out both ends, as I say. And that was like, oh, my. Is it bad enough that the world, I've got to get to the bathroom? Luckily, it's, you know, I have one off the bedroom, but just to get there when the room's going like this and to yeah. deal with both ends, I was, that was, I can honestly say that's the worst of, uh, you know, um, the symptoms, the different symptoms. I mean, pain is, is definitely high up there. You know, it's easy to, <laughs> but um, it's so debilitating. You can't function. Like you said, I remember just okay, if I could find a position where it's not moving and then stay still as it slows down, but then you, like you say, you just move your head and then the bed. Exactly. <laughs> so it's just, uh, yeah, I don't and know if anyone would really appreciate it unless they experience it. I don't know what my triggers were, but sometimes if I needed to get out of bed, to go to the toilet in the night, in the dark, if I didn't put the light on, trying to stand up in the dark 
that would make it spin. Wow. Uh, I had no balance either. So you can imagine standing up, spinning with no balance. I used to fall on the floor. Yeah. But so it, fortunate you didn't fall and I um, know. Whack I know. I, I've been very lucky. But as I say, I don't know what the triggers were, why it would happen and why it would happen when you're lying down. You would think being completely supported and not moving, just <laughs> lying there, why would it spin? Why would it spin? And that's when it would usually hit me. I might have a, a hint of it during the day once I got sensitive enough to notice just a, a little whoosh. And I go, oh, you know, you might be in trouble tonight and sure enough like you say it happens in the morning or in the middle of the night you just move your head in the dark you can tell you're go you're spinning because your head is just feels right. bizarre it's a very weird feeling um yeah that's okay <laughs> sympathy is with you for the, anyone who has to go through that it's it's, it's little... funny because my mother had it and my grandmother was diagnosed with Meniere's disease. So maybe it's not the MS. Maybe it is a hereditary gene I have or something. But uh, it's not very nice. No. 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 And neither is all that pain that you described in all your joints and tissues and bones. There is nothing i don't think you can describe bone pain i used to get bone pain in my legs oh. and i could only liken it to having toothache in your legs you know because <laughs> it, it just hurt so much i used to, I used to think it was like someone was taking a metal rod and hammering into my shin because that's one of the places i would get the worst just like but a constant pain not like with a break just this mm. deep deep yeah. bone pain it's like how i you know i had already experienced the joint i think that was the first kind of pain i used to sit around you know be 30 years old and i'd be with 80 90 year old people because i was part of a a, a nature organization there were a lot of elderly people and they were talking about their migratory arthritis and i was 30 and they'd look at me like you're a little young to be experiencing that but muscle pain joint pain um the bone i think is to me is the most severe it's just intense it's really did Very. you have restless legs as well? Yes, I did. Um, magnesium seemed to really help with that. Um, and I still take some magnesium. I, I, I know that helped with the migraine as well. Um, don't take as much as I used to when uh, I, it never really worked that great, but I knew it was taking an edge off of things. And now, you know, I, I take a smaller amount and it, it does its job as far as that goes. With the LDN, sleeping at night is just so much better than, you know, other than some very vivid dreams that come and go. Uh, I can't complain about nighttime. It's it's wonderful to be able to go back to sleep. Um, so what would you say to other people who are thinking of trying LDN? but they're rather scared to take the first step. And I can appreciate that, but it's such a, to me anyways, it's such a gentle, you know, other than my GI and that's rare and not everyone's going to have to, you know, discover and they likely wouldn't have such a GI experience as I had to, to give it a try because there's a, a chance that you're going to find out what my girlfriend and my husband both watched me and said, I think I'd like to try that too <laughs> and see what happens. And my husband used to have poor sleep. He says it's much deeper now and he feels rested the next day. He used to feel dragged out. Now he's not. Um, my girlfriend, uh, 
also her sleep has improved and she has energy during the day that she didn't have before. She used to feel like she never had enough energy. Um, those are just, you know, a few things that have changed in their lives. And I, I, I tell everybody, that's why I like to do these interviews. I tell everybody I meet about it. Yes, try it because really, do you have anything to lose but your pain or or other symptoms that are driving you crazy, making you feel like, like I did, like this is never going to end. And I'm getting, I'm, I'm 68, you know, I'm getting very close to 70 and to three quarters of a century old. I did not want to, you know, think about being that sick and that old. And some people, you know, there might be in their, 20s or teens I don't know they should try it and avoid this <laughs> decades of illness what a wonderful thing if, if I had known you know or if it was available for me which in the 80s I mean that's when it started right so that would have been that would have been amazing I, I can't even I can't even imagine what imagine the life that would open up that was closed off to me that person listening might have their life opened up in a way that they can do things that they would never be able to do if they continue down this road because it doesn't get easier the older your body gets if you have chronic illness it, it's worse you know because we don't bounce back the way we're not resilient anymore so ldn is definitely worth trying there's no doubt in my mind for everyone that you know gets the approval that's you know there's no conflict from the doctor well thank you so much for sharing your experience with us and it was very nice to catch up with you again oh thank you linda and thank you so much for all the work you do i really appreciate it any questions or comments you may have please email me linda l-i-n-d-a at ldnrt.org i look forward to hearing from you Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciated your company. Until next time, stay safe and keep well.